Welcome everybody. Before we get into the latest Rhinos and Aliens impression, I just wanted to point out how Eminem's most recent album, Music to be Murdered by, debuted number one. And in the process, Eminem became the sixth act with at least 10 number one albums, joining The Beatles, Jay-Z, Bruce Springsteen, Barbara Streisand, and Elvis Presley. In the process, he also broke a tie with Kanye West for the most consecutive Billboard 200 number one debuts following Kanye West Jesus is King in 2019. As anybody who's been keeping up with this, both Eminem and Kanye West were tied for nine consecutive number one debuts in a row. So now Eminem has 10 straight. He is the first and only act slash artist to have double digit consecutive number one releasing albums. I hope you guys enjoy, and here goes Rhinos and Aliens Impressions. <laughs> Welcome to Rhinos and Aliens. Yeah! What's up, Rhinos and Aliens? What's up, cows and pigs? You're joining us for another Rhinos and Aliens Impressions. This time, we're doing Eminem's newest, latest sneak album release. Music to be murdered by. Which, by the way, do you think the title fits the album or vice versa? I don't think album names necessarily ever fit the album. Like, what did Kamikaze have to do with the album? A sneak attack that's going for, for, for the throat. And I think basically every track is going through for somebody's throat. Well, I guess that's a, that's a fitting name then. I think so. Music to be murdered by. I don't know. Like, what what do you think he meant? When I first heard that title, I'm like, holy shit, we're getting some 2002 era when Eminem was going after. Like, you remember like those diss tracks with 50 Cent, DMX, and those people? That's yeah. the type of music I was expecting. You thought I was going to go dissing everybody? Well, not dissing, but I thought I was expecting some hardcore old style beats. And we got some old style beats, but I thought this was a lot more looser. I thought, honestly, now that you mentioned beats, that the production on this album is better than I thought it was going to be. Like, I was skeptical because of how Eminem has been steering away from, like, sticking to one or two producers where he's just kind of like, open uh working with other producers so i True. thought so i thought it was going to be trash in terms of production but yeah. i actually liked the production and i thought it was very cohesive like the whole album sounded like it was put together not just a bunch of like collection of songs they just kind of like didn't mesh well for the most part yeah because there's there's the a skylar gray one i thought like you mentioned earlier before we started it sounded like a revival track yeah but everything else was very like new style hip hop beats, which I'm not generally a fan of. But somehow, like, or at least if you, if I, if I had like heard some one of these new rappers on those beats, I would have been like, yeah, Eminem would not work on these beats. But then when I hear Eminem on them, I'm just like, all right, I guess he could. I would make the case they were new style influence because I feel like new style yeah. has a lot of shit going on, while these beats sounded new style. They still had the simplicity of older school beats if you go back and listen to them there's not that much shit going on yeah yeah Th does that make sense yeah i agree with that yeah so like overall what did you think of the album like what's your overall impression like is this something you you hate something you liked something you hated the first two three times i'm like this is different uh-huh then the fourth, fifth time, I'm like, this was a perfect example where a shorter album would have been better, in my opinion. I love that it was a longer album. Yeah, but bro, there was a couple of tracks that I was... But think about it. There's 20 songs, three are skits. Yeah, so, so, so six, sev 17, 17. And then two I didn't like. Which two did you not like? The uh, Skylar Gray one and the uh, No Regrets one. I didn't like the chorus for it at all. And this is, I don't know. I feel like that didn't fit the style of the album. I was not a fan of Darkness. Honestly, I would say 
out of the songs that I did like, right? Because I, I already named the two I didn't like. But out of the, all the ones I like, Darkness is the only one that does not sound like it belongs on the album. That's but one I of them. I fucking love it. Why do you love it? The mood. The way... Okay, first of all, Royce of Five Nine as a producer, where the fuck did that come from? Good point. Because he... That shit sounds like he's been producing this whole... Like, obviously, like if you look at the production credits, there's like... Other people. Other people on it, but still. To... For that, I don't know. It, that's one of those songs where like... Well, real quick, was, can we also get into the fact... Producing is like tennis, in my opinion... It looks, or in this case, sounds like it's easy to do, but when you really try to do it, it's so much it's so much more complex and difficult than anybody can even wrap their head around. Yes, and this is my thing about this song. It's so hard f- sometimes for the 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 subject of a song to go with the beat so well, and I don't think there's been a lot of times where I've at least with Eminem's case or a, a lot of times in, in rap really, where such a heavy topic and 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 like just subject matter can go so well or can be so well represented by the by the production they were like hand in hand yeah yeah I how put, well the beat fits with the subject i put that song under respect i'm not a fan of it but because of those two points the beat and the lyrics blend so well the melody it's like honestly, I can't tell if that was that was the one where he he's specifically going out against gun control, right? No, he's going for gun control. Well, well I meant like he's he's speaking out about gun yeah, control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. It's but it's one of those songs where it's like I can't tell if he wrote to the beat or the beat was made to the lyrics because it, they just they're so perfect for each other. I I almost want to say that they wrote the song first and then added the beat to it. And if that's the way they did it, then holy shit. But it's an amazing but, production job. But M normally is the opposite. And if you listen to basically every track, the verses more or less are going with the beat. And the way he he rap some of the verses go, it's I find it very difficult to imagine that he for whatever reason made lyrics specifically like this and then they made a beat perfectly around his delivery. I know um there had been a time when Dr. Dre had mentioned that the way him and M work together would be that he would send them skeletons of a beat, mm. right? And then M would write to him, and then once he got those back... Polish it up. Yeah, and then build the melodies and everything around it based on whatever Eminem had done. But like you said before, because they are so one in one, who knows? Yeah. Leaving heaven, we just need to get it out there. We are, we're, we're not a fan, right? No. I just I didn't like the whole vibe of the, do you, the song. Do you even think it's a good track though? Cuz I personally I feel like that from beat to lyrics and especially hook it's his weakest track from this album. The hook I don't think it's not it's that it was bad. It just it was a different vibe from the album. But th- that's why I think it's it feels out of place. Yeah. I feel like if it was on Revival, it would have just perfect. Was that a Dr. Dre produced song? I do not know, so I'm not going to... It sounds like something on Relapse as well. You think so? It sounds like something on Relapse. I don't know, bro. That sounds more like the the Eminem after Bad Meets Evil, where he was doing a lot of that rock-influenced... Skylar Gray and Eminem produced that. That makes a lot of sense. Can I play something from Relapse real quick? Yeah. The kick? Boom. See how this this kick sounds like? I like like three songs on that album. And that's just like slightly like them. Okay, so you saw the, the production on that, on, that, on that song, right? Mm-hmm. To me, it feels like revival-ish. Rev- no, relapse I feel like, you remember that one album... I get, it was the, it was after Bad Meets Evil and right around when he put out Marshall Mathers LP two, where he was doing a lot a lot of those soundtracks and it was a lot of reverb, uh, rock influence. That's what yeah. that sounds like to me personally. So basically, we can both agree it's just not a not a great song. Not only for the album, I just don't, I don't like it. It's it's I think it's weak, yeah. and I don't like. Well, what's the message? 
It's I think a, a, he I think the song is about him leaving heaven, going into hell, and and beating the shit out of his step or out of his dad or his stepdad. I, yeah, but right is that what the song is about? Is like going to hell to kill a stepdad or something? Or is no, that- I, no, I think so because two tracks later it's the stepdad skit and then yeah. the stepdad song. The stepdad skit I feel could have been part of the song. Like that didn't need to be. Uh, need, Bro, it, didn't need it, to be it was the shortest one, right? It was short as hell. Yeah. You know, like the on Little Engine, there's a little intro skit, and then it goes right into the song. I feel like that could have been it for... Yeah, bro. It's in the teens. That's how long it is. Yeah. It could have been part of the song. No, I agree. Yeah. Well, since we're on that, how do you feel about Stepdad? I... It's one of my least favorite of the ones I do like, because I can listen... In, okay, let me explain that. I can listen to it on my own, f- more, more so than not. But I would not play that if I was listening to with it with other people. If I was listening to the album, like I would skip that song with other people. In terms of encouraging them to listen to the album, to encourage them to listen to the album. Yeah, because I, I I feel like the lyrics weren't as good as the rest of the album. What wasn't there a one song like that in on Relapse, where it's like the mom version? There's one one of the newer albums where he made a song about his mom. Is the one about like? Um, apologizing to his mom. Or? Yeah, that was that oh, was. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what that song reminded me. But obviously, the complete opposite. I'm like, you didn't like it. I, I don't. I, it's, it wasn't the subject that I didn't like. I just didn't like like the lyrics. Like I no. feel like some of the words didn't even rhyme. Like the it, they were so forced rhyme, and it wasn't like multi syllable rhyme. And it was like I kicked him in his head, went back and went to the ground. A friend in the net. No, it, it it was it was almost lazy. Yeah. If M tried to create. That message, early M, he would have picked a completely different beat and went for a completely different delivery style. I think the beat, it's not so much, but I agree on the delivery. Because you know the one about his mom when he's apologizing, right? Yeah. He picked a similar soft beat, which makes sense with the message. While the message of this, for example, when he's when he's rapping in this... It, you remember Insane from, from Relapse, mm-hmm. which I think is one of the better songs from that album? Yeah. He was going for that type of thing, yet the beat and his delivery did not match the lyrics, in my opinion. I like the beat. It's the lyrics that I felt were lazy, even for that beat. No, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying the lyrics were good, but I'm saying what he was trying to express through those lyrics... The song does not mesh together. Yeah. Like, the message is clear. It just does it like a, it's just lazy. It sounds like it could have been, there could have been a better lyrical version of that same song. Okay, okay but let's say he it had a better lyrical version. Do you think the, the tone of the beat matches what he's trying to get across? That's my problem with, with the track. I think so. And only okay. because, to me, it sounds like it's like a playful, like... Old school. Remember, like Slim Shady, where he would go on an entire verses about like sneaking into a high school gym locker and picking a fat girl and beating her up, and it was like almost like I threw her over the head. I but that was always so impersonal. That was always him, him almost acting. I feel like this. Yeah. So that's why. Like, even though like he probably does hate his stepdad. Um, Did if, you listen to some of the lyrics? Th- yeah. So <laughs> it feels like it's true. Like well, over exaggerated. Yes, but it's like yeah, because like I was the, the biggest kid in in my in my class. I I beat him over the head, and if I go to jail for this, I'm gonna say ah ah hey. So it's like it's a serious with a playful spin to it. So it, which is why I think the beat match because the beat sounds like you can murder someone to it, but like it's a more of a tongue in cheek oh, murder, almost like a spoof film yeah. type of yeah. Got you. So, but. Yeah, I probably could have been a better song. How, how do you feel about Never Love Again? That was the 14th track. I like most of that song. The chorus is my favorite part of that song. Are you doing this for them? You know what this song reminds me of? And I loved it when it first came out. I fucking hate it now. Not Afraid. That song reminds me of Not Fucking Afraid. Really? Yes, bro. Is it what, like, the way the chorus is like? Yeah. I'm not afraid. Never love again. It reminds me 
about something. It, 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 it reminds me of Recovery, but not that song. I am. I'm so surprised. Like, what is going on with you now? Right. Okay, because you loved Venom, which it was Eminem's most commercial track from that album. Kamikaze speaking. Uh huh. This is one. It sounds like to me. I think that has a completely different vibe, though. Dun, dun, dun. Like no, that's getting you hyped. Same, but if it, 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 I, I, I'm not afraid, I never love again. I don't know. It gives me recovery vibes, though. Well, not afraid is from recovery. Am I incorrect? <laughs> Burger. <it. laughs> that song was hard. But we're not talking about recovery. But it, I, but it definitely. Re- so we agree it's recovery vibes. We just can't pick a song from recovery yes. to agree on. But we both agree not afraid is his weakest song from that album. Um, let me look at that album real quick. Cinderella Man, I wasn't a big fan of. Is it Cinderella Man? Not afraid. I'm not a huge fan of, but like I, 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 it grew on me a little bit over time. Really, for me, it was the complete opposite. I hated it at first, and it grew on me a bit. I don't love it, but I can stand it. Like if it gets played anywhere, and I'll listen, I'll fucking vibe with it. But mm. if it gets played twice, I'm like, all right, that's enough. Got you. You know. Okay, so so how do you feel about so so you would you 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 respect that song? You really fuck with it. I love the chorus. Okay. The hook, I never love again the way I loved you. Did you find someone new? Yeah. Are you doing this for them? I I love it. I love the 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 melody of it, like everything about it. The beat and how it slows down and lets the and they let the chorus be the main focus cuz I feel like in a lot of songs Dude, that is a good point because the 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 chorus kicks in a lot sooner than a normal Eminem album, and it plays what three or four times, right? I think so. I don't like the second part of the hook where it goes. Did you ever learn to know someone? Na 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 na. I know it's like a little clarinet in the back or something. I wasn't a fan of that. I would have loved it more if they would repeat the first part twice for for or even if just once and then go right to the verse but i like that no 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 no. i think they did that just for filler in terms of add yeah add to the switch it up yeah Yeah. okay overall i like the song and my last the last song that i did not fuck with was track six in too deep i fucking love that song okay so my thing about that that song maybe it'll grow on me for whatever reason the beat and his tone of voice with the lyrics, it just, I hate to be this person that doesn't sound like M, which is probably why you like it. Laying there with him, thinking about me. Crying face emoji, you say this is you without me. <laughs> I fucking love this song. Okay, this is why everything I love about this song is one, the beat fits, I think. It, the, the the tone. I'm not just... Dis- like his tone of voice. I, I'm... Hey, bro. I want to make this clear. The, I think that from a mel- from a, a synchronization perspective, this is one of the better songs. Yeah, I just do not like it for an Eminem song. See, I liked it for an Eminem song because I remember one of the things you had told me that you didn't like about the album is that you felt that he had done other versions of uh, the, these songs better. Better. This song is new to me. I've never heard him talk about a, a, a so- in a song where. He's cheating on his wife or his girlfriend. Yeah. And since his whole his whole career has been about has been the complete reverse. Yeah. But she's getting cheated on or he's getting cheated on yeah. or he's cheated but that's because she cheated. But this one's like, yo, I'm cheating and the girl I'm cheating with is also cheating and we want to be together, but we also kind of don't want to hurt the people we're with. So it's like you can't help who you love with. So it's a different it's a different subject, but I feel like it was so well done everything about it. The chorus was nice. I'm not happy. Un- unbiasedly, like you take away this is an Eminem song. I respect the shout out of this, but for whatever reason, and I want to make this clear music is more than any other art, is something that you could grow more with or, or detach from. The, the more you listen to it, the older you get, whatever. You want to know something completely off, but agreeing with what you're saying? You know that new Bieber Yummy song? You like that song? I fucking hated it. Now I can listen to it. Like, that's the thing. And I hated it for so long, and I thought it was the st- 
stupid as shit, bro. And then I heard it in certain speakers, and the way the bass was hitting, I'm just like, oh, okay, okay, beeps, bro. I don't know how he. So went, I don't love it. I don't know how he went from his previous album to that track. Yeah, the song grew on me. I don't love it, but I I like it. I guess you can say I like it. Laying there with him, Godzilla. Love Godzilla. That's one of my favorite songs on the album. Honestly, Godzilla, Darkness, Ya Ya, Marsh, Little Engine, Lock It Up, I Will. Which one was I Will? In Too Deep, Those Kind of Nights, You Gonna Learn. Unaccommodating, I agree with you. Young M.A. did not fit that up. Not only that, not the song. The No, honestly, the song she fits. I feel like M doesn't fit the song. But, bro, he slays that second half. Yeah, but it still doesn't fit the beat. But Young M.A.'s verse fits the beat, but it's still whack. Like, Young M.A.'s verse okay, well, is trash. Well, well, let, let's, okay, so Premonition, that's the intro. I fuck with everything about it. I like the beat. I like I like the, the woman singing, who I don't know who the fuck that was. I don't remember that song. What the fuck? It's the intro. <laughs> you know how many times I've been skipping this song because I I kept you thought it was ju- a skit just the, the stab 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 and no. then and then they would kick into a song a different song you didn't know that bro no I've heard this song now that I skipped ahead and I've I'm oh, like okay. oh fuck I know this song but I every time I play this in my car as soon as it starts I skip it because I think it's just a skit <sighs> oh shit I think it's one of the better ones it's a good song for sure yeah yeah okay so that now that leads to. Uncommodating. Yeah, that Young M.A.'s versus Trash, like you said. How the fuck did anybody in M's camp especially approve that. M approve of that verse? No, like how do you not send that back? Like, look, look, look. Yo, I do one should be on the album, but this is doo doo. Bro, you remember the the when we first hit up and we both said we listened to it twice? The first two times I skipped that song because oh, like a minute and a half, a minute forty is her, and I'm like. I, Fuck that. And then I finally went back to it. I skipped that. And then I found out like the last two minutes is fire as hell. And and at the last minute mark or something, the beat changes up. And then he changes up. Yeah. Yeah. I would have rather that been a two minute track just with M. Yeah. Yeah, she did not. Fa- maybe, honestly, at this point, maybe M is just putting all these different artists on that people think they're popular. <laughs> just to show them up. Why, is, why does he keep teaming up with Ed Sharon? Right, I do not like any of the the like because you know together he, don't work like it they don't fit sonically because you know he did a feature for Ed's newest album yes and, and I that, like I like the song but it still felt like something was off about it they don't individually even even the the song from from revival right that was the one well what was the first tr- track that he featured with M was it the one it was revival because that was the one where he did Ed. Beyonce, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. Was it on Revival? It was. What song? I can't remember. I just know, because that's where he put all the pop stars on. Yeah, you're right. Pink. Oh, Pink's always been that, which I also don't, I'm not, I don't love Pink features. But as far as Ed Sheeran, Ed Sheeran as an artist is fucking great. And, and as a songwriter, as everything Ed Sheeran is individually is fucking amazing. And technically his features by themselves are typical Ed Sheeran. Yeah. But then when you put it with the M verses, yeah, and then uh, his voice didn't match this beat at all. Ed Sheeran's, oh hell, bro, it sounded like what, like a a typical new school rap beat. You know, it would have been the perfect person to put on the verse. Whoever the fuck, whoever is is that Ed Sheeran saying it's one of those kind of nights? Yeah, is that him too? I believe so. I wish he would have done that voice or that style of voice for the entire uh, chorus. No, that's definitely Ed. Because that the whole everything after that I didn't I didn't where like, he starts to legit sing yeah I was just like that's that doesn't fit the mood of the song at all no like it was like a club song that that was like trying to like mix with a with a pop artist that was trying to sing a love song he was like this is the fade. moods the, yeah it just yeah. it went from one to the other and I'm pretty sure Eminem was not going for that yeah I didn't like that no but the song itself is fucking awesome everything I love about it except the Ed Sheeran. Uh, See, see, I feel like this would have been a perfect song if who's that one rapper who used to have the good voice with Eminem and he used to Nate Dogg. Oh yeah, I, I feel like that if Nate Dogg was still alive, that would have been this yeah, song. Remember the uh, 
uh, and I get moassed in the toilet. Yo, there was such a perfect like, cause it was like I feel like a similar sty- style of song, a uh, lighter clubby. No, a, a club. This is Eminem's club song from yeah, this album. Exactly. So it was like the clubby version of a, of, a, of a song on the album, but the chorus was almost better than the verses with how well it fit the voice, the tone, the lyrics. Yes. But Ed Sheeran, like, I'm sorry, bro. Like, your music is. Amazing and like fuck, so it relatable. Just, on sometimes so many artists levels. just don't mesh. Yeah, but it just—I don't think I've liked anything he's done with Eminem. I haven't liked and again, one single and, and, thing. And I'm saying I, I, I kind of fuck with the one where M and Fifty did on the well, on his on, album on his album. Yeah, because it was more M adapting to, to that album. But yes. yeah, for whatever reason, when Ed tries to adapt to with M's, M, yeah. It does not. No. Even when he's going for the pop, like, because at the end of the day, Revival was M's pop album at the end of the day. Yeah. The closest he could come to pop, and even then, it still didn't work. Mm-hmm. All right, what else? You're going to learn. Is that the Royce of 5 9 one? Yes. Oh, my God. It's one of the most, the more beautiful produced <laughs> Beautifully produced. Oh my god, that chorus, that sample is a sample. There's no way it's a sample, right? Because it's like sl- slow down. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, bro. it's definitely. There's no way it's not. You're the slow expertise down. in this. But film. that album, that song is just fucking beautiful, bro. For me personally, I, it's top five quality, top five entertaining. I, I every time I listen to this album, I listen to that from start to finish. Can I just say it is? Every song Royce the Five Nine does with Eminem, Royce the Five Nine out raps Eminem. Every single time, going back to his entire career, I don't think I've ever heard an Eminem and Royce the Five Nine song where Royce the Five Nine did not outdo Eminem lyrically. And and you know what it is? What is it? Royce the Five Nine is not a better all around artist than Eminem. He is a better lyricist than Eminem, hands down. Right? I will, I cannot argue with that. Right, hands down. Royce the Five Nine will wrap circles around Eminem. I will Unless make you're the... talking about the speed shit, which is impressive, but it's not necessarily better. Better. I, I will say this though, Royce the Five Nine lyrically, I feel like can go toe to toe with anybody, ever, ever. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, and I say I've been saying this my whole life. You, you, you're the one who put me on to him, right? And this is why I'll tell you why I think Royce the Five Nine kills Eminem in every song. Because if we can agree that Eminem is a better all around artist and Royce the Five Nine is a better lyricist, if we assume that any song with Eminem is already good because Eminem is a good artist, so you'll make sure he has a good chorus, a good production. All Royce all around, has to do. All Royce has to do is, is bring, out rap Eminem. Bring the lyrics. That's. All he has to do, and he does it every time. Can I say this, though? Do you think Royce had the better lyrics for Caterpillar on his newest album? I'm not... I can't I can't judge that. I haven't... I've heard that song two or three times. And, Are you and fucking shitting me? at this moment, I don't remember the lyrics. I know the song is. I've heard the song, but I haven't heard it enough to be able you, to say... You want to hear my case? I'm not going 100% agree with you. I will say this, though. I feel like with those two, whoever is being featured on the song more often than not has the better lyrics because they're trying to show out. Cause the two the two features I heard Eminem feature on a Royce the Five Nine song, I feel like he bare minimum did as well, if not better. You know what it is with Royce, I think? What makes him a better lyricist? He's able to have like all the he's able to do all the shit M can do, as far as wordplay. Okay. But can do it by sticking to a subject. Where Eminem, I feel like a lot of times will be sticking to a subject, a subject, but the lyrics will go off a bit just for him to be able to say like some now. cool metaphor or like. I think now. Yeah. Well, th- more so now. But even in the Slim Shady LP where they did the the one song where it ends with, like, See You in Hell. And yeah. Then, yeah. Hell, the sequel, which, which took led, 10 years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. To, um, on that song, I think it's the closest they've ever come to being... Consistent. Yeah, par on par with, like, yeah. yo, these are both good, but I still think Royce... With Royce featuring bit. on an M album. Yeah. No, I agree. No, I, I, I agree. I, f- for me, I think Royce's diction... 
is better for staying on subject. I know one song where Royce did not outdo Eminem. But that's because I think Royce was way out of his element. Which? The Bruno Mars song. I, from, from, from the album, right? Where they teamed up? Yeah. I can't remember that. Which, by the way, once again, that was one of my least favorite songs from that album. It's, yeah, it was, a pop, it was a total radio hit. Yeah, it was a radio, radio song. Dude, was, I love the song Emin- where it's like, uh, now my car parks itself, starts itself in autotunes. Yeah. And, 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 and the whole beat was whack. That shit sounded like a fucking Bruno Mars beat. Can we just say this? Some rappers just don't sound good with pop artists. Yeah. And I feel like Eminem is one of like for me, my favorite Eminem songs with pop artists are the the old school ones where he's he he he's uh what is it called? What is dancing pop artist? No, 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 like sing for the moment. That's tech what is that called? Oh yeah, but that's like a rock and roll sample. Like, well, yeah, like well, when he samples. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, when he samples. So when Eminem samples a old school style poppy rock song i feel like that's the only time it works yeah because this modern m just doesn't have the voice or or the delivery more often than not that yeah. go that that goes with the soft lovey door yeah cute shit yeah that goes with the ed voice it just pissed me off every ever since the point of his career where he started collaborating with pop artists that you know in the early 2000s he would have been oh he would have been he, he would have been, been talking about fucking and he or he would have been making fun of them. Yeah, like you know he would have been making fun of Ed Sheeran. You know besides he would have been Rihanna making... though, because I feel like Rihanna is just the modern day of his Mariah Carey. If he met Rihanna back then, he would have tried to date her. I just, I just, I get those vibes, but yeah. he doesn't because of the age difference. Like just, just imagine if they were the same age, bro. He, she just gives off Mariah Carey vibes, just not as talented. I feel like that. I feel, I feel that with Skylar Gray. Like, I feel like they fuck it. Like, Skylar Grey is the female Eminem. <laughs> I you can't disagree. Right? No, no, I can't. Her fucking songs are about, like, murdering ex-lovers. It's and, dark. She's dark as shit. And when you think about it, she, she has the same physical appearance, like, female version of They look of like it. trailer trash together. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love you, Em. They're a dumpster fire together. In a great way. Well, there's a reason why she's been on so many features. She's That's what I'm saying. They they work so well together. Just yeah. this song, they just then this album, it wasn't it. But which I which really surprised me because everything they've ever done together At is a the, fucking masterpiece. Yo yo, the first thing I ever heard with them together, the the, the, the Dr. Dre, where he's featured and she's singing oh, the. Co- I'm about to lose. Yeah. My, yeah. Like every yeah, I know you like that singing. Shut up. Every time, b- besides this, which is also why I'm so surprised, they go together. Her voice goes with his, and, 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 and it sounds unison. In terms of when you hear her singing the hook, it goes with the beat. It doesn't sound off-put. Before I forget, I want to mention something before I forget it. Yeah. Um, speaking of something like that. Uh, remember in, in Kamikaze how Eminem had the whole song about apologizing to D12 and how he mentioned if he would have put if he would have put some so and so and so album, maybe they could have been better. Yeah. I'm surprised after all that, he didn't put them on this album. After in that same album, he had a line in the Ed Sheridan song, the song's taking me back to my D12 days. Bro, I'm and you so didn't gl- put anybody from D12 on. I'm it. so glad you, you said that because after Kamikaze. Another reason why I was initially disappointed with this album, because because when when he, when the album came out and it was titled uh, "Music, Music to, to Be Murdered by. by," that made me think D twelve, but just not D twelve. The old school where he would have Cassius or not Cassius, uh, who who Stat Quo, Obi Trice. Yes. Yeah. Why not? Why didn't he get Obi? I've been wondering that forever. I wish we got an. N- an Eminem album where he would just like, hey, all right, straight did, old school. I, yeah, I did my pop features. Now I'm gonna have a song where I'm gonna feature Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Fifty Cent, D12, Ob Trice. That's it. Just those five artists, or D12 is a couple, but those five features. No, those five artists because D12 is a is a group artist. Yeah, and Roy- Royce obviously. Yeah, but why can't we get an album like that? You know what this album reminded me of? A different version of Bad Meets Evil. Because when you think about the features, they're very similar, man. Besides, but 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 Bad Meets Evil did have that one group with that that was good until they put out their album and it was very commercial. What group? It had Royce the Five Nine. You thinking about Mob Deep? No, bro. That one group that D Twelve group, like an, an Eminem group. Yeah. 
And he, oh, Slaughterhouse. 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 Which talk about failing D12. He failed Slaughterhouse. He didn't put them in a good position. Yo, Slaughterhouse, I think, failed From, because of Eminem. Bro, bro, this is... Okay, okay. Getting back to why I was so disappointed with this album, bro. We're coming off of Kamikaze. He is basically burning all his sins. He he is going back to what his original fans loved him for. And then he comes to this, and it's like, yes, you have you have Royce the Five Nine, but every other artist is different. Some of the artists are still old school Eminem type of artists. Like we're gonna get to track sixteen. But Young M A, is that her fucking name? You picked her. Over Obi Trice or somebody from Slaughterhouse, Snoop like Dog. Yeah. Now S- Slaughterhouse is on this album. Yes, I know, I know, but, but I okay. I liked every feature on this song in this on this album except M A and Ed Sheeran, and then Skylar Gray was they because of the feature. It was just because the song was in it. Yeah. But the feature, uh, it's always a hit with Skylar Gray. Yes. I I don't want to be that person where. I, I like where M is going, but my disappoint. Okay, I'll be clear. Overall, I respect the album. I enjoyed the album, but I feel like it could have been so much greater if you just tweaked a couple features or just don't have features at all. Like I, I really feel if you take away the features for those two tracks with Ed Sheeran and Young M A, the songs are better. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, and and my thing is, bro, you made a whole album dissing the media about getting on you for, for, for trying to go commercial, and then you're you're just catering to the younger audience. I think the only song where he went commercial was the Ed Sheeran one, because I think the Young M.A., I still believe to this day, because of how whack that verse is, I think the only reason he left it on was probably like, this is not what I had in mind, but this new generation about to learn. <laughs> Cause like I am about to kill this bitch, <laughs> and he did. He did. Even though, it's, I, like I said, I don't think his verse fit the beat. I don't think the beat fit the album. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a better second half of well, the song than the first half of the song for sure. Yeah. Well, in my notes, I I say I hate the first half, love the second half. Okay. What did we rate Kamikaze? I think I gave it like a nine, right? I gave that shit a nine. What are we giving this album? What? Okay, before we do that, because I just want to get into, because because I want to get some shout outs, Godzilla, R.I.P. Juice World. That was a crazy song. I fucking love that. Song. That's a hype song right there. That ending of the song. <laughs> Didn't he break the record from like his last album, from his last song? I did not know that, Rap but God, because he he rapped more words in a in a certain amount in of a time. minute. Yeah, than he did in in Rap God. Holy, I did not know that. That's crazy. I want to give a shout out. Well, you want to shout out Yaya. Oh my God, that was a crazy song, especially Royce. Royce fucking killed that uh, that that song. I think that was his best feature. For th- yeah, oh yeah. In terms of like showing what he could do lyrically, and that's and that's, how he switched up my flow all over the. And I'm not used to him rapping to that kind of beat personally. Yeah, yeah, because he's always like, yeah, it's. I want to say old school, but different old school. This is like old, old, old school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, I, I'm, I'm, even though he raps fast, he's normally rapping to a slower type of beat. And this is just like a hypey, like energy, uh, uh, like jump type of beat. Yeah. He, also, he's the only one that, that in that same verse, he had the shortest verse. And he also had the most complex verse. Because Eminem, the way he starts off the verse, the flow. It was slow. It goes all the way from beginning to end. I don't think his flow switches at all. The second guy <laughs> definitely does not switch his flow at all. But he had some dope lines that... The, uh, the, I know who you're talking for about. Me, I am the ventriloquist. The, the black the thorough dude or whatever yeah, he's yeah. called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rap speaks for me. I am the ventriloquist. Fucking fire line. But Royce the 5'9 had the best verse hands down. Because of the way it started it was fucking old school as shit. Yes. The way he switched up the flow like five seconds in, yo, and would you say it up like two more times after that? Would you say like uh, when he first started that gave me LL Cool J vibes, like that type of of rap style? It's like like the old like NWA, like old yeah, like early nineties, like the the beginning of yeah. rap, like in late eighties, hippity hip hop, but a bit pop, yes, yes, yeah, 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 it's fucking dope. All right, what else did you want to mention? Marsh. Bro, just the Martian. W- I feel like this is one of his most typical Eminem songs. Like the way it starts with with, with the shout out to 
Elf or whatever. Alf. Alf, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, then, and then the beat, it just... Ha! I kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it gave me very Encore vibes. Shut up, Beaver. Oh, shut up, Beep. Uh... Be- Beavis, Beavis, yeah. Shut up, Beavis. <laughs> oh. And then I want, I want, I want to finish with, bro. Little Engine and Lock It Up. Lock It Up is my favorite song with a feature, not by Royce the Five Nine. It's my favorite song with a feature who I don't know who the fuck that is. Bro, he is awesome. You no, know him from before? Yeah, I, I listened to. He released an album in 2018, and there's one track you will completely fuck with. I've never heard of him, but he was fucking. Perfect. You know what reminds me of the way he raps? Uh, Kendrick. Yeah. But he came out around the same time as Kendrick. He's a, he's a, I believe he's a New York City type of guy. Oh, okay. Cause just the way they were like, Detroit, how it's like very like loud and like surround. <laughs> yeah. What, what would you call that effect? It's not an effect. It's just like they record it and then they record it a couple other times and pan it left and right. So it's like a full like surround. S- sur- yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and then, like in headphones, that's beautiful, dude. No, I was about to say, bro, that song. W- oh my god, yeah, bro. it's it's just <laughs> orgasmic for the ears. No, you took the words right out of my it's mouth, bro. So from sonically pleasing, from the beat to the hook. Same thing with Little Engine, the way that na 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 na. Little I Engine was the Dr. Dre one, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. With the when when it pans a little na, 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 left and right. If you guys haven't listened to that song with good headphones, oh you know my what I'm god, talking about the way that oh man. It's beautiful. And and listen to uh what's the one we were just talking about. What's it, what's it called? Lock it up. Lock it up. Listen to that with headphones. Featuring Anderson Pack. Yeah, listen to that shit with headphones on. You'll see what I mean. All right. What are you giving this album? Overall. Unbiasedly. Yeah, unbiasedly. Take eight. yourself out of Eminem being an Eminem fan. Eight. Eight out of ten. I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten as well. Now, honestly, because I am an Eminem fan, I actually dislike it a lot more than I respect it. I I I understand exactly what you're talking about. Because when you when it's you you hold it up to different standards, yeah, right. Like you, if you're not an Eminem fan, you're gonna to this album and you might like you. I fuck with this heavy, but if you know Eminem and you know what the standard that you hold them up to, like you hold them to higher standards. Well, as we as we have had numerous conversations about this, an uh, average Eminem album would be for most artists. Their best album. Yeah. I think this is way better than Marshall Mathers' LP2. Yeah. Once again, bro, I feel like if this was as short as Kamikaze, I would have given it a higher score. Personally. There's just some tracks that... Yeah, because then you eliminate the error for the, the, the chance for, for bad songs. Yeah. Well, you know what this... You were saying re- recovery should have been what is what Encore should have been. Yeah. I feel like this is the modern day... Encore of Eminem's catalog, my opinion. The modern day encore. Yes. Damn. Because just like Encore, bro, I love how the the album starts. There's a song or two I I fuck with in the middle, and I love how it ends. But that middle is just like it's it's a nosedive for me in terms of quality and what what I'm looking for. It's just the valley. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. For the most part, I fucking love the album. There was just two or three songs that I just like. Ah, no, but that, that's. But it wasn't enough to ruin it for me. I'm not saying it's it's ruin because I'm still I still fully support encore, bro. I I freaking love it. Oh no, I'm talking about um music to be murdered by. No, I no, I'm making oh, the comparison. Okay, yeah, 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 I'm making the pr- comparison. I yeah. still really fuck with this album, but it's. I'm the type of person I'd rather have ten. Great tracks and the possibility to miss out on an excellent track, then have twenty and then only sixteen be good, or or more so good. like I get two excellent tracks, a whole bunch of great tracks, but I get three really shit songs. Yes, yeah, I think that's probably why Kamikaze was short because he's like, listen, this is my, I'm gonna clap back at all my haters and I'm not gonna give you a chance to talk shit about yeah. any song. Yo, but overall, so solid album. Solid album. Yeah, eight is not a bad rating at all. Hell no. And what, by the was my lowest rated one? Six was uh, relapse, relapse. Fuck if four. I could give it. Well, yeah, four. Yeah, which is <laughs> that's bad. I hated that album. But by the way, we were I, at least I I came off very negative. The songs that I fuck with on this album, as Sebastian experienced off camera, I really like I, when I, when I say I I put this with the best the best Eminem songs. I legit can listen to them nonstop. Yeah. 
Okay, so I, I think that ends it. This is our Rhinos and Aliens impressions of music to be murdered by, even though I feel like half the songs you can't get murdered by. <laughs> <laughs> Only a couple you can't get. You can't get murdered to Ed Sheeran. That'd be a shitty way to die. <laughs> Like, if you're going to be murdered, then it's going to be dramatic, like some serial killer shit. Like, it can't be a chance. That's resuscitate, a disrespectful resuscitate death. Resuscitate me and then, like, let uh, fucking Yaya or I Will. I Will would be a good song to be murdered to. That beat, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's Francis. I'm Sebastian. Because we always like to introduce ourselves at the end of a video. Fuck yeah. You, you want to know who we are? Watch the whole thing. Kadoodle. Kadoodle. <laughs> If you want to subscribe, just hit this bad boy up here, that big fat rhino. If you want the newest video to the right, if you want the recommended to the left, and then, of course, our personal dick, dick pic. Yep, right below. So thank you for joining us once again, and we hope to see you next week. So peace out. Peace.